Welcome to Code with Kurt, the channel that brings you the latest Google Sheets and Google Apps Script videos. In today's video, we're going to use Bootstrap and make a simple web app form. So here I got my web app up here, and I'm using Bootstrap to lay out the CSS of this form here. So I can go ahead and populate it. There I fill out my web app form and I can submit it. And here we're going to store that information on a Google Sheet with the first name, last name, street, city, state, zip, email, and creation date of that record. So I'll go through a step-by-step -step process of how I put this together and how I brought Bootstrap into this form as well. If you're new to this channel, subscribe to catch my latest videos. So let's get started with this video. Here I have the start of my new Google Sheet. I'm calling it Web App, Web App Bootstrap as my spreadsheet name. And I got a sheet name called Form Data down here. And all I have here is just a header record. I got first name, last name, street, city, state, zip, email, and create date. And these are the, these are the fields that I'm going to be passing in from my Web App form. So that's it, just a header record, no other data here, and that completes this sheet. So next we're going to go to the Google Apps script of this. I'm going to go to Tools, Script Editor. I'm going to name the project Web App Bootstrap. I'm going to hit OK. Next I'm going to copy in my Google Apps script code. So there I have it copied. I'm going to hit Save. Next, I'm going to create my HTML page. So I'm going to go to File, New, HTML File. I'm going to give the name of Web App Boot. And this is important because this ties into my Google App Script code here. So I'm going to hit OK. That's created. Just gives you a basic HTML file. I'm going to go back to my Google App Script. Here I have this function called do get. This is a standard Google Apps Script function. This is what gets your page started. So when you do the publish deploy to web app, you need this function in here so it will generate your HTML file or take your HTML file and render it into a web page. And here I got one call in here. It's called HTML service create HTML output from file. And I'm calling that file as web app boot, which matches my HTML file over here, right here. So when this thing gets published, it comes up. It's this thing calls my HTML file. This come and this is what displays in the web app. And then my next record here is add record. And I'll, uh, I'll go through this later after I go through the HTML here. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in my HTML. There I have it copied. So I'm going to start with the top here, and these first three statements are from our basic sheet here, so those will stay. My next statement is my Bootstrap library here, and where I got that from, so if you go to the Bootstrap website, this is the main page here, you scroll down to here, and you see this Bootstrap CD end here, and I just copied this CSS only link here, because Part of this, all I'm doing is the CSS part of Bootstrap. I, I'm not getting into the JS or jQuery part of it. I'm just doing the CSS. So I copy this link. I pasted it right here. Exactly. Came off this, pasted it here. Uh, the next section is my JavaScript code right here with the script. And it ends down here. And I'll go through this. Just a bit later, I'm going to scroll down here and show you my my form layout. So here I got my body. This this finishes up my header. I got my body here. So here's my form layout. So I got my first name, my last name, my street, my city, my zip, my email, and my button, add row button here. So this is how Bootstrap has you put in these class names and from the class names it derives how it should look on the screen. So the form row here is I got a row here and then I got my street in a row. I got my city, state, zip in a row. 
and I got my email in a row and then I got my button in a row and I'm just kind of adding this on here and then with these form group columns this is just telling you okay this is a column and this is how big I want it so they measure in I think 12 straight across 12 is the whole length of the screen so for a section of three width I'm putting first name and three of last name six of street so it'll go the entire length of the first name and last name three width on the city two width on the state and one width on the zip and then for email I'm just doing three since it's a new row and then the button I have is three as well so that kind of explains that if you want to go in more detail of that you could go to this bootstrap uh, website and go to documentation and I think it's under components and you can go to forms here and it will go through all kinds of documentation and it will show you the different layouts of what you can do but that's the detail I'm gonna go into um, again I got this oh, another thing is this form control is I got that on every input box I have as well that's another bootstrap command as well so class here class there for the row for the column and for the the input and then um, once everything's populated in this form I got this add row uh, button down here and I'm calling add row JavaScript here so what that does that does is it calls this JavaScript function called add row up here and all this basically is doing is, is it's grabbing every value here first name last name street city state zip and email by the ID so my first name ID I got this input ID first name ID last name ID street ID city so it's grabbing the value every value I populate it all the way down the next statement I'm doing an if statement I'm making sure everything's populated so if it's not equal nothing last name is not equal nothing the street all the way through then I'm going to call this Google app script command called add record. I'm going to pass all the values through it. So this is kind of a standalone statement here. This add record. And what that's doing is going back over to my Google app script and it's calling this function. It's passing all those values through. This URL, this is important here this will be the URL of the sheet you want to populate so I'm gonna go back over to my web app spreadsheet here I'm gonna grab this URL on top I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna go over to my web app or my Google app script over here I'm gonna go ahead and paste it okay so I got the URL in there of the sheet I want this data to go into here I am passing that URL into this spreadsheet open by URL and then I'm declaring the sheet a form data so that's my sheet name I'm, again I'm using the object of SS on get sheet name for my URL that I passed in and then from there I'm appending a row to it so it's gonna take the next available row that's open which would be two here and it's gonna add that record in right there so I'm gonna go over here so that's what this statement does it's taking my sheet name appending a row and it's taking all the data first name last name Sadie streets city state zip email and I'm passing a date field in there as well and that will be my creation date of the record so I will post this code I'll copy and paste it on the comment below the video I'll copy the Google app script as well as the HTML as well so you'll have that as an example but again if I copy this I'm gonna keep this URL blank here because this will this will change according to your sheet so you'll have to copy and paste this URL and according to the sheet you're going to be using so I'll keep this as blank but again when you pop paste it in you have to copy the URL in of the sheet you're going to populate so I'm going to save both of these so I'm going to save code and I'm going to save the HTML here and now I'm going to go ahead and publish so I'm going to go up to publish I'm going to go deploy web app and it's going to say project version new I'm going to call this uh, just first and execute the app as me and only myself so I'm going to go ahead and deploy it's going to take me through authorization required I'm going to select my account I'm going to select advanced I'm going to select the web app bootstrap I'm going to allow 
So now it's going to give me the URL, what I'm going to use. So I can copy, copy that. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to copy that. You can copy and paste that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the dev version of this, the test version. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to hit publish. I'm going to hit deploy web app. And I'm going to go to the latest code. So here's your actual URL. This would be your production type URL. But if I make changes and stuff in here, I can use this latest code to test it. But if you want to publish your latest changes, say as you're changing through, you want to go, go to project revision, hit new, do another URL, and it'll give you a new URL of your latest code revision. But in this example, I'm just going to hit latest code for some in development. It's going to pop up. Now I can fill this out. Got it all filled out. I can hit submit. There, clears all everything out. And now it populates over here. I did forget to mention one thing over here. I didn't finish my HTML over here. So after this populates, what it does is it makes every value empty or null after it goes through. So, so first name gets blanked out, last name. So when I hit submit, it blanked all these out after it got put into the Google Sheet. And here is display error. So say you don't populate everything in here. I'm going to display an error. It says, please enter all information. So I go back over to my sheet. Say I hit submit here. forgot. It's going to say, please enter all information. It's not going to send it on until I get everything filled out here. So I go back over to my Google Sheet. So, so that concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below the video. Until next time.